Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight on this Tuesday, April 25th, 2017. We're going to talk to Gerald Salenti, the uh, founder and editor of Trends Research uh, Journal and also Trends Research Institute. And, of course, Gerald has been very active in terms of promoting peace around the world. He had the Occupy uh, Peace uh, organization that he set up, had rallies this last fall. So I want to talk to uh, Gerald about how he sees... Uh, things going economically, but also the war and peace issues, because we're now seeing that uh, Donald Trump talked to the U.N. National Security Council yesterday at the White House. Uh, he'll be meeting, uh, I think it's today, with all 100 senators from uh, it, within the White House, again, talking about the North Korean situation. And, uh, Gerald, let's get your comments on that. Uh, are, are you... Um, optimistic about uh, this working out peacefully, or do you think this is something that they're pushing for war? You know, I've been hearing about North Korea just about all my life. I mean, this is a poor country. I, I think North Korea, didn't they invade Iraq because Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction? That's right. Or Same playbook, Libya? isn't it? <laughs> or was it Libya because Gaddafi has to go? Or maybe, maybe it was Syria. I think that they started that with the Arab League. No, no, I know. North Korea is in Afghanistan for the longest war probably in their history. Oh, no, I think they just sent troops down to Somalia. I mean, this is a country of nothing. Yeah. So yeah. What, what this is, it's more war propaganda. It's what Eisenhower warned us of, that the military-industrial complex is robbing the nation of the genius of the scientists, the sweat of the laborers, and the future of the children. Just look what happened last week in the USSA. Hey, lights went out in San Francisco, huh? Hey, all you Silicon Valley cats, no lights on. Hey, what happened there in L.A.? Woof, went down too. Here in yeah. New York, don't take the subway, man. It's a night in Calcutta. They close down all the time, but war everywhere. And when I listen to this guy that's in charge of the Defense Department, James, quote, Mad Dog Mattis, what adult would call himself Mad Dog? And I hear the words that they're speaking. You know, I don't know if it's going to be North Korea, but I'll tell you what I think it's going to be and what we're forecasting. And that is they're heating up a war with Iran. Israel keeps coming out, warning us about Iran. Mathis was over there last week with Netanyahu, and they're talking about Iran. You hear Tillerson, one after another, talking about Iran being the greatest sponsor of terrorism in the world. Those are their quotes, not mine. Or to paraphrase, don't want to get sued, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, that Kobani place that you were talking about yeah. up here in New York State, I believe... I don't want to be misquoted, but I believe they also got about $5 million in tax breaks. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the thing that we see happening. And, of course, it's happening in Idaho as well. They get state and local subsidies, just like all the big companies do, for, the, for graciously opening up their business. But who pays for that? Individuals, workers, and small businesses subsidize these big corporations, just like the NFL owners and their stadiums. And then he also, Gerald, gets subsidized uh, labor because these refugees come with subsidies from the federal government. So what a deal. You get the government to open up your factory for you, and then they bring in some subsidized labor for you as well. That's right. It's, it's, look, it's called the merger of state and corporate powers. A paisano of mine that I'm not too fond of, Mussolini, called it fascism. Yes. So let's call a spade a spade. Oh, and I could say that now without being called a racist now that Obama's out of office. That's right. Yeah, they, they can, uh, today they don't call it uh, economic fascism, they call it public-private partnerships. Isn't PPP. that nice? Uh, and we're yeah. the ones that they're PPPing down our backs and telling us that it's raining, right? You got quote, it. Josie got Wales, it. so... Yeah. yeah, it's a day in slave land here. So going back to the wars, this country's falling apart at every level. <clears throat> the stock market's not a reflection of what's going on. You guys know the facts. What, 51% of the working people in America with full-time jobs making $30,000 or less? <clears throat> you know the story. 
5% of all the dough created since 2009 went to the 95% of all the money went to 5%. So <clears throat> what we're looking at is we're wasting the monies on war. You know, they keep talking about watch out for the Russians, watch out for the Russians. What's Trump increasing the budget, 54 billion bucks? Mm -hmm. Russia's total budget, defense budget, ours is over 600 billion. Theirs is $48 billion. So our increase is way bigger than their entire budget already. Exactly. Yes, yes. So what we're saying, what we're seeing here is an escalation. All of a sudden, one day within 24 hours, whop, Sam, boom. Hey, let's send missiles into Syria. We'll show them. Hey, how about the mother of all bombs? And by the way, I, where's the father of all bombs? Who are they going <laughs> to drop that one on? I mean, you can't make this stuff up. Yeah. Ah, exactly. You know, one of the things that interests me, too, uh, and of course, you understand this, uh, Gerald, that uh, as we're talking about refugees, as we're talking about the war, this is all related to regime change. This is part of the globalist plan to flood our countries, to flood the West with refugees fleeing the war. One of the things that I objected to about this puff piece that CBS uh, 60 Minutes did with Ulukaya was the fact that he comes on and they just portrayed him as a jobs creator. We just talked about all uh. the subsidies that he gets for his factories and his workers, but he said, they're not refugees if you give them a job. Well, you know what? They're not refugees if you stop the war that you created in their country to drive them in. And, and Gerald, we've just seen the Russians as well as the Chinese move massive amounts of military uh, to the border that they have with North Korea because they're concerned about a massive flood of refugees coming into their country. If there is a economic meltdown from the sanctions, or if there is a war, they know they can't absorb massive amounts of refugees. No country can. It isn't a racist thing. It isn't that the Chinese are racist against the North Koreans or the Russians are racist against them. You simply can't do it. That's the way you destroy a country. So they have positioned their troops there at the border. Of course, we don't have troops to protect our borders because we're abroad fighting wars everywhere, aren't we? Yes, and that's the part of OccupyPeace.us, because it's only about us. And that's one of the things. Close all the bases overseas, bring the troops back, and protect our borders. Yes. That's one of the elements. The other one, of course, is force Congress to vote to go to war, rather than El Presidente of Los Estados Unidos, who's, it's, a, it's, it's a violation of the Constitution, and Congress has not voted to go to war since World War II. And mm -hmm. number three is to have a ballot on each state, a referendum, where we'll tell Congress how to vote because they don't send their kids to vote to, to fight wars. We do. That's so right. we pay for the war with our money and our lives. And I want to go back to what you said first about the refugee problem. And you're one of the few people that also says it. What caused the refugee problem? Why don't we put together a blue ribbon panel and maybe we could figure it out? <laughs> you know, oh, you mean you we only do a destroyed... government funded study, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you mean you destroyed Iraq, killed over a million people? Oh, I wonder how they got radicalized. Can't figure that one out either. That's right. Oh, in Afghanistan. Oh, they're coming from Afghanistan. Wonder why. And you know the fact, David, that when Gaddafi warned Europe, that if they took him down, the refugees would be flowing into Italy and into Europe. And because he had made a deal with Berlusconi and the other leaders of European countries that he would prohibit the flood of migrants coming out of Africa, the poorer countries, and going from Libya into Europe. And then when the Nobel piece of crap prize winner, the arrogant Obama, said Gaddafi has to go. We wrote about it in the Trends Journal in the summer edition 2011, over 500,000 Libyans escaped the slaughter that those liberals are so sorry that the Obama and Hillary Clinton are gone that caused it. Oh, yeah. No one talks about how this happened. And one other point I'd like to make in what you said, it's not racist if you don't want refugees. Go back to the Great Depression. I mentioned how bad this country is doing for we the little people who have to work for a living. 
when the depression hit, they stopped everybody from coming in until the country rebuilt itself. We have 220, 320 million people. We can't take care of our own. I got a great idea. Let's bring in another 100 million. Yes, yes. It's an engineered takedown. And as you point out, they knew this. They were warned by Gaddafi. And of course, as this thing was going on, we have emails that WikiLeaks gave us where they're talking about the fact that uh, fighters are coming into Libya. They're identifying people just by identifying them as being black and killing them. So you talk about Black Lives Matter. Well, it didn't really matter to Hillary Clinton or to Barack Obama when they wanted to uh, do the uh, takedown of Libya. They want to create chaos and war in these countries so they can create a flood of refugees and tell us there's nothing that can be done about it. We just have to bring these people in so then they can create chaos and terrorism in our countries as well. That's what the, the whole plan is. That's what concerns me so much about this turnaround with the Trump administration. We didn't vote for this. We didn't vote for Lindsey Graham. But now Lindsey Graham is ecstatic about the government that he has. He says it's what he's wanted for eight years. He's so excited about this. I'm very concerned about it, quite frankly. I see Paul Wolfowitz, very optimistic now about Trump. Elliot Abrams loves him. Uh, all, the only thing wrong with Trump, says uh, Elliot Abrams, is he's got to get rid of uh, Steve Bannon. So when I look at these things, it really concerns me the direction that are going after making a very initial uh, a great start. I'm worry, really worried about where this is going. Stay with us. We'll be right back with Gerald Salenti. In ancient times, man roamed the earth in a constant state of hunting or being hunted. Introducing Caveman, where cutting-edge science meets ancient super nutrients. Secure your bottle right now at InfoWarsStore.com. 